Hi, my name is Richard Hartline, and I would like to speak heart to heart today uh, concerning the subject of false teachers and false teaching and false prophets in the Bible and how they relate to us today and what we see around this. My purpose today is to try to biblically show why we are admonished um, to do this, to, to be, have our eyes open, to expose false teachers and false prophets. Uh, um, the purpose of this uh, recording today is not to talk about specific people or specific false teachers, but to lay down the biblical precedent that we as believers have to do this. First of all, the Bible says we are to try them. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 1 John 4, 1. The church in Ephesus was commended because they had tried them which said they were apostles and are not, and you have found them as liars. That's in Revelation chapter 2, 2. And then the church of Pergamos was rebuked because they tolerated those that held the doctrine of Balaam and the doctrine of Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. That's Re Revelation chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. It's never right to tolerate false teachers, but they are to be tried by the word of God and exposed. But the problem is this, that those who want to disobey the word of God will seek by every means to avoid this teaching. That's the problem. The Bible also says we're to mark and to avoid them. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which we have learned, doctrine which we have learned, and avoid them, Romans 16, 17. And I just want to reiterate that uh, the purpose of this uh, recording is not to specifically name any false doctrine or false teachers. Um, in this particular recording, but it is to give the biblical precedent that it's not only okay, but it's commanded for us to do. It's not unloving or unkind to point out false teachers, false doctrine. Now, you know, the Bible refers to these people as wolves in sheep's clothing. So by not warning the sheep, we're actually opening the door to the sheep pen and allowing the wolves to come in and devour the sheep. We're, what we're saying is, come on in, Wolfie, Wolfie. I got some lamb chops for you to eat. The Bible also says we are to rebuke them face to face or any way we can. Therefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Titus 1, 13. Now, this was written to Titus because there were those who were going from house to house subverting whole households with false doctrine. This is very similar to what is going on today uh, in the church as far as Christian uh, broadcasting and, and Christian TV and much of the silly doctrine that's coming across the airwaves into these households. You know, a good meaning for discernment is this. Discernment is not knowing the difference between right and wrong. It is knowing the difference between right and almost right. In the Gospels, there are 14 scripture references to, uh, in reference to false teachers, false doctrine, and false prophets. 18 in the epistles. So do you think it's just a little important? Do you think that somebody should be at least paying attention to these things? You know, if something's in the Bible once, it's important. If it's in there twice, it's very, very important. And if it's in there three times, it's over the top. But 14 times in the Gospels and 18 times in the Epistles, I think it's important. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Also, Jesus said, not everyone who says to be Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I said, and then I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. So we could be building great churches. We could be missionaries. We can be uh, Christian broadcasters, have great TV shows, record albums, um, uh, famous artists, and none of that matters. What, does, what matters to Jesus? He who does the will of my Father in heaven. That's what's important to Jesus. And that's what's in the scripture. 
And that's what the church in America is missing. Second Peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 2, but false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be also false teachers among you who will secretly, secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their sensuality and because of them, the way of truth will be maligned. One more scripture here from Ephesians 5, 11 through 13. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now, the thing about reproving people and bringing to light, uh, this is all, often labeled as unloving, unkind, uh, who are you to judge? You're dividing the body of Christ. And uh, this has nothing to do with what scripture says, because the scripture says any unfruitful work of darkness were to expose them, not cover them up, and just sweep them under the carpet. This is Paul talking in Acts. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. This is a charge to shepherds. Listen to this real closely. To feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, even among your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn you every one night and day with tears. So I think it's clear. I think it's so evident that we are to expose false teachers and false doctrine. Now, here's the biggie. Are we permitted, are we commanded, or are we forbidden to name false teachers and false prophets by name? You know, many mistakenly believe that it's wrong to expose error and then to name the guilty teachers, but they are wrong according to the Bible. Uh, I want to give scripture for all this, and, uh, and I don't like to usually use antidotes, but uh, I would like to use this one. If there was a child molester living across the street, and your child was going to that person's house, I'm going to tell you, name and address, and to avoid him. I'm not going to look at you and say, hey, beware of child molesters. Uh, I'm not going to name the name because I don't want to hurt them. So. To not name a false teacher who is deceiving somebody, they're being deceived, would be ridiculous. All right? But let's see what the Bible has to say about it. Paul himself named Peter publicly. Peter was guilty of an unscriptural practice. He was mixing the law with grace. And here it is. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him, Paul said, face to face, because he was to be blamed. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, before them all, in front of them all, if thou, being a Jew, lives after the manner of the Gentiles, and not to the Jews, then why do you compel the Gentiles to live as the Jews? Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, Paul named Demas for loving the world. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Paul also named Hymenaeus and Alexander. Paul told Timothy to war a good warfare, holding faith and good conscience, which some have put away concerning the faith, and have made shipwreck, of who is Hymenaeus and Alexander, there they are, the names, who I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. This is in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 through 20. Paul also named Hymenaeus and Philetus. He told Timothy to study that he might be able to rightly divide the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as does the canker of who Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is already past, and overthrow the faith of some. This is in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 through 18. Paul also named Alexander the coppersmith. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou aware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. This is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 14 through 15. 
John also named Diotrephes. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, received us not. So in conclusion, I think it's safe to say that the Bible not only teaches, but commands us to expose false teachers, false prophets, and false doctrine, and name those false teachers and those false prophets by name when necessary. This is Richard Hartline, loving you enough to tell you the truth. Com. People are sitting in church Sunday after Sunday, year after year, and still are not saved because they're listening and believing in ministers who are leading their souls to hell. Jesus explained in the scriptures that those ministers are not going to heaven and they're blocking you from going. It's like the blind leading the blind because the people love their pastors and their churches more than Jesus. Just because a pastor is behind the pulpit doesn't mean that he's preaching from the word of God because they will pervert the word of the living God for their own purpose. That's why the Bible says to try the spirits by the spirits where they be of God because there are many false prophets who are gone into the world. Don't listen to preachers, I mean false prophets, who are motivators of prosperity, of self-empowerment, of health and wealth, and teachers of life skills because they say that they're giving you the principles to live by to improve your life. Like most popular preachers and TV ministers on TVN, like Joe Osteen, T.D. Jakes, and Rick Warren. Many ministers are following their teachings instead of the teachings of Jesus Christ because they want to have large churches and large amounts of money at the price of your soul. People need to wake up and realize that their teachings are doctrines of demons to contradict the Bible with half lies and half truths so Satan can get your soul. Their teachings come from the rudiments and wisdom of this world, which is foolishness with God, and is based on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. God says, this is not of me, but of this world. And the Bible says that those type of ministers are of the world. Therefore, they speak of the world, and the world hears them. The world listens to them, the world believes them, and the world will follow them straight down to hell fire. God says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. And they will cry aloud and spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and their sins. Ministers are supposed to warn the sinners to save their souls from hell and warn the righteous not to sin so they won't end up in hell. If they don't, God is going to require their blood at their hands. Preachers of the day are afraid to warn their congregation about their sin and talk about hell because they're afraid that the members, the mothers of the church, the deacon board, the board members, and their money might leave. If a minister is not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ, he would preach what Jesus preached consistently, not once a year, because God says to teach my word faithfully. They would preach it in season and out of season. They would preach the truth when they want to hear it and when they don't want to hear it until Jesus comes back. False teachers will tell you what you want to hear. Beware of people who do this because all they want to do is to gain the glory of men. Satan plants these demonic minions so that it can have your soul. Ezekiel 33, 3, 1 KJV, and they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them, for with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Ezekiel 34 to KJV, son of men, prophecy against the shepherds of Israel, prophecy, and say unto them, Thus say, the Lord God unto the shepherds, will be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. 
Should not the shepherds feed the flocks?